Welcome to the Hunt and Amy Klein, a great place here in the Arbuckle Mountains to study fractures and carbonates, as well as see fracture corridors, some strike slip faulting, as well as a pretty cool thrust fault that cuts this structure. So we'll go explore all of that today. We'll go put our finger on that thrust fault. And I hope you enjoy this video and I hope that one day you can join me out here. The Hunt and Annie Klein is located on the hanging wall of the Reagan Fault, a fault that likely contains components of both strike slip and thrust faulting. The structures in this area developed about 300 million years ago during the Pennsylvania orogeny, a mountain building event that shaped southern Oklahoma. The Hunt and Annie Klein sits in a region of local thin skin fold and thrusting in the Arbuckle Mountains. And it's also a great place to see exposures of both the Hunton Limestone and the Woodford Shale, a world-renowned hydrocarbon source rock. So let's get this adventure started by taking a quick flight over this incredible outcrop. Next up, let's take a look at a few fracture corridors. Fracture corridors are a zone of pretty intense fracturing. These can occur at asperities, in other words, where a fault might become stuck, such as a bend or a step over in the fault, or where a fault is even initiating. They're also common in fold hinges and also in more brittle rock. They tend to be highly permeable unless they become mineralized, and it's possible to even map these using seismic attributes. Because of the fracturing, they tend to slow down the seismic velocity. And when they do occur in outcrop, they can easily become eroded. So let's take a look at a few of these along the Huntanini climb. Here is a great example of a fracture corridor. See that intense fracturing and how it goes pretty much all the way up the section? Notice how on each side of there, there really aren't as many fractures are as there are right there in that middle part. That middle part going through here, that's our fracture corridor. There's several in here, so we'll take a look at some of the better ones. Another great example of a fracture corridor, and I've also found evidence of fellow geoscientists being here in the past. Notice the coloring on this corridor as well. I believe that occurs due to flow through there, altering some of that rock. So fracture corridors tend to be great conduits for fluid flow as well. And another example of a fracture corridor, look at that intense fracturing. Notice how on each side of this fracture corridor, the fracture spacing is much farther apart, but here in that corridor, it's incredibly closely spaced. One more last corridor, then we will move on to some other structures. But this one is pretty neat because it has some larger gaps where the rocks have fallen out of there. And you can see this fracturing. Super cool. Next up, we will look at a few slicken lines 
observed along the strike slip faults that cut this structure. Slicken lines are usually just lineations along a fault surface, and when they're accompanied by small steps, these actually aid to indicate the slip direction. So let's take a look at the slicken lines at the Huntanini climb. Here we're looking at one of the little small strike slip faults cutting the crust of the structure. So I hope you're able to see these slicken lines through here. And based on how these step right there, that would suggest that this is a right lateral strike slip. So that this block moved to the right and the block that's missing right here, or that's shown right here, moved towards me to the left. So when you step across that, you'd have to go to the right. So this would represent a little right lateral strike slip fault. Pretty cool. Here we're looking at another great spot to see some of those slicken lines. You can even see some calcite cement on here. And you can tell by the slicken lines that this had horizontal movement. And by the way this breaks off right here, this is telling us that this would have been right lateral. So this, this block here would have moved to the right and the piece that's missing would have moved to the left. And we know that by the way we see these little broken pieces along the slip surface. So a couple things to notice. Here I'm looking at a block that has essentially fallen off, but I'm seeing some pretty cool slicken lines as this, on this block right here. So based on the way these are cutting it right here, you see how that falls off? That shows me that this side went to the right and the part that fell off, that would have gone to the left. So that's a pretty cool thing to see. So here we are pretty much in the apex of the anticline. There are some pretty neat fractures right through there. That would pretty much represent the axis of this anticline. So then if we come over here and look at this fold limb, what we see is a kind of a jagged surface up there, just through there. That's our thrust fault that cuts this anticline. So we're gonna follow that down to the right until we can go put our finger on it. And if I remember my references right, there's about 30 feet, or it might be about 30 meters of offset on that, and it dips close to about 30 degrees. So we're gonna go take a closer look at that structure. So here we are, uh, about to put my finger on the thrust fault, or my hand. The but joys of being a structural geologist and the things that make us happy. So just to get, you know, a zoomed out view of what we were just looking at. So we just walked up to this little surface in here and put our hand on this little deformation surface. And you can see how that kind of transgresses up through here. Well, the main... Also, notice how the fracture intensity tends to increase as the layers approach the thrust plane. Just some more examples of that deformation. I really appreciated these fracture patterns here. They really kind of remind me of little like imbricate duplex like structures. Well, that about concludes our adventures here today at the Hunt and Annie Klein. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that one day you can come and join me in the field. We'll look at all of those fracture corridors and those slicken lines and I'll even let you put your finger on a thrust fault.